Good evening. Welcome to your City Commission meeting for Tuesday, May 12th, 2020. Meetings are televised every day on Channel 2 at 7 p.m. and midnight and available for viewing on YouTube and Facebook Live. Due, due to the restriction of social distancing to mitigate the spread of COVID-19, the City Commission meeting will not be open to the public. In accordance with Kansas Open Meetings Act, the meeting can be viewed live on Channel 2 and via Facebook Live. Questions on agenda items will be read uh, during discussion on that topic. And the guidance was to submit questions to C. Williamson at firstcity.org no later than 6 p.m. on May 12th. Members of the public wishing to receive agenda notifications can contact the city clerk at cwilliamson at firstcity.org to be added to the agenda email distribution list. Agendas are available for viewing on the city website, www.leavenworthks.org. Um, so we're going to get started, and if everyone would stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by silent meditation, we'll get started. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. The first um, order of business are uh, proclamations. Uh, we do have four of them again, so I'll take the same approach I've taken in previous meetings and go ahead and read them. And of course, um, there's nobody here to receive them, but we will get them mailed off to the representatives from the various organizations. So the first one is for National Poppy Day and City of Leavenworth, Kansas, proclamation whereas poppies are worn and displayed as a symbol, symbolic tribute to our fallen and, and the future of living veterans and service members, and whereas at the end of World War I, the American Legion adopted the poppy as a symbol of freedom and the blood sacrificed by troops in war times. And whereas the use of poppy symbolically comes from the poem in Flanders Field, which movingly begins in Flanders Fields, the poppies blow between the crosses row on row. Referring to the poppies that sprang up in the churned earth of battlefields across Belgium and France where soldiers died fighting and whereas the American Legion family has long utilized the red poppy as its official flower symbolizing the blood shed by those who have served in our U.S. military and it is fitting that as the American Legion and American Legion Auxiliary approach their 100th anniversaries they expand the meaning and symbolism of the poppy, mirroring the manner in which the poppy is symbolically showcased in England and Canada in celebratory fashion on the Remembrance Day, also known as Armistice Day and Poppy Day. Now, therefore, I, Myron J. Microswell, Mayor of the City of Leavenworth, Kansas, hereby proclaim May 22nd, 2020, as National Poppy Day. I encourage all citizens and visitors of Leavenworth to join in observing this day to honor every service member who has died in the name of liberty, freedom, and democracy, while also showing their support for living veterans, service members, and their families. In witness thereof, I set my hand and have affixed the great seal of the city of Leavenworth, Kansas, this 12th day of May in the year of 2020. Mayor uh, Myron J. Mike Griswold. So that's the first of four. Second one is for the Leavenworth Historic Preservation Month, City of Leavenworth, Kansas Proclamation, whereas historical, historic preservation is an effective tool for managing growth and sustainable development, revitalizing neighborhoods, fostering local pride, and maintaining community character while enhancing livability, and whereas historical preservation is relevant for communities across the nation, both urban and rural, and for Americans of all ages, all walks of life, and all ethnic backgrounds, and whereas it is important to celebrate the role of history in our lives and the contributions made by dedicated individuals in helping to preserve the tangible aspects of the heritage that has shaped us as people, and whereas this place matters is a national campaign 
co-sponsored by the Leavenworth Preservation Commission, Preservation Alliance of Leavenworth, Leavenworth Main Street, and the National Trust for Historic Preservation. Now therefore, I, Myron J. Mike Griswold, Mayor of the City of Leavenworth, Kansas, here, hereby proclaim May 2020 to be Leavenworth Historic Preservation Month and call upon the people of Leavenworth, the first city of Kansas, to join their fellow citizens across the United States in recognizing and participating in this special observance. In witness whereof, I set my hand and have affixed the great seal of the city of Leavenworth, Kansas, this 12th day of May in the year of 2020, uh, signed Myron J. Mike Griswold, Mayor. Next is a proclamation for National Police Week, City of Leavenworth, Kansas. Proclamation. Whereas there are approximately 900,000 law enforcement officers serving in communities across the United States, including 60 sworn members of the City of Leavenworth Police Department, and whereas the Congress of the United States of America has designated the calendar week each year during which May 15th occurs as National Police Week, and May 15th of each year to be Peace Officers Memorial Day, and whereas the names of those dedicated public servants are engraved on the walls of the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial in Washington, D.C., currently there are 21,910 names of fallen heroes engraved on the memorial, of which 128 officers who were killed in 2019. And whereas the members of the City of Leavenworth Police Department play an essential role in safeguarding the rights and freedoms of the City of Leavenworth, Kansas, and whereas the citizens of Leavenworth and our leaders pledge to stand with the families of the fallen officers, the officers protecting our community, and the officers throughout the United States, and to honor their loss as they protect their communities, and whereas all officers of the Leavenworth Police Department are encouraged to turn on their red and blue lights for one minute every day at 11 a.m. from May 10th through May 16th, 2020. Now, therefore, I, Myron J. Mike Rizzo, Mayor of the City of Leavenworth, Kansas, hereby proclaim May 10th through the 16th, 2020, to be National Police Week and call upon all citizens to observe appropriate ceremonies commemorating law enforcement officers, past and present, for faithfully preserving the rights and security of everyone in the community. In witness whereof I set my hand and affix the great seal of the City of Leavenworth, Kansas, this 12th day of May in the year of 2020, signed Myron J. Mike Griswold, Mayor. And the last is for Leavenworth Public Works Week, City of, Leaven, seven, City of Leavenworth, Kansas Proclamation. Whereas public works services provided in the City of Leavenworth are an integral part of our citizens' everyday lives, and whereas the support of an, un, an, of an understanding and informed citizenry is vital to the efficient operation of public works systems and programs such as wastewater, streets, highways, public buildings, solid waste collection, recycling, and snow removal, and whereas the health, safety, and comfort of this community greatly depends on these facilities and services, and whereas the quality and effectiveness of these facilities, as well as their planning, design, and construction, is vitally dependent upon the efforts and skill of public works officials, and whereas the efficiency of the qualified and dedicated personnel who staff the Leavenworth Public Works Department is material influence, materially influenced by the people's attitude and understanding of the work they perform. Now therefore, I, Myron J. Mike Rizzo, Mayor of the City of Leavenworth, Kansas, hereby proclaim May 17th through the 23rd, 2020, to be Leavenworth Public Works Week, and call upon all citizens and civic organizations to acquaint themselves with the issues involved in providing our public works and recognize the contribution contributions which public works officials and employees make every day to our health, safety, comfort, and quality of life. In witness whereof, I set my hand and have affixed the great seal of the City of Leavenworth, Kansas, this 12th day of May in the year of 2020, signed Myron J. Mike Griswold, Mayor. So that completes our proclamations for this week's City Commission meeting. We are going to go to Old Business and the the agenda item under old business is consideration of previous meeting minutes. Are there any 
comments or questions about our minutes from our meeting on April 28, 2020. If not, I will entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, Commissioner Wilson here. I move to approve the minutes from April 28, 2020, regular meeting, and uh, May 5th, 2020, special Is there a second? Commissioner Leonhard, I second. Okay. There's a motion and a second to approve the minutes from April 28th, 2020, regular meeting, and May 5th, 2020, special meeting. We are going to begin voting with Commissioner Wilson. Uh, Commissioner Leonhard. Aye. Commissioner Bowder. Aye. And I, as the mayor, vote aye. Uh, the ayes have it. The vote is four to zero. So the motion carries, and we've approved the minutes from the regular meeting of April 28th and the special <coughs> meeting of May 5th. Um, I just need to remind my fellow commissioners um, before, uh, I'm not sure we need to do it in the when I call for the vote because I'm, I'm announcing their names, but if you have comments, uh, go ahead and identify yourself. I'm, I'm going to identify you during the votes, but otherwise, please identify yourself as we've done in the past. Okay, we're going to go under new business, um, public comment, and Emails received by the public for public comment on non-agenda items will be read at this time. I don't believe we have any, do we, Ms. Yes, correct. We okay, we don't have any of the public comments. Um, the first order of business under new business then is uh, a public hearing for unsafe structure, 1109 Spruce Street. This item was rescheduled from the March 24th, 2020, and then the April 14th, 2020 regular meetings to determine um, to de for the reason of determining holding public hearings during the COVID-19 uh, shutdown. So um, we are going to need to open a public hearing and I'll entertain a motion to do that, please. So move, Commissioner Bowder. Commissioner Wilson, second. There is a motion and a second to open our public hearing. We will begin voting with Commissioner Leonhardt. Aye. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Commissioner Bowder? Aye. And I, as the mayor, I vote aye. The ayes have it. The motion carries four to zero. So our, we are now in a public hearing. And the next thing that we need to address is staff and public comment. And citizens wishing to make comment, please dial into the, into the go-to meeting using your phone. Uh, at this point, or when we began the meeting at 7 p.m., do I need to? Do we have two? Okay. And uh, just re I'll repeat the phone number 1 872 240 3412, access code 864 746 757. And your calls will be placed into the queue for comment. And apparently, we do have two citizens who wish to comment. So, um, do we? They're unmuted, so oh, okay. if they would like to talk now. Yeah. Um, yes, that I'd we, suggest we do staff comment first. Do, do staff comment first? Okay, very good. Let's go ahead and do staff comment. Mr. Kramer? Yeah, uh, Mr. McDonald, our public works director, will handle this item. Mike? Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Mayor and Commissioners, uh, I have Hal Burdett here with me. If we have questions that uh, he can answer better than I. This is related to the house fire that occurred in October uh, of 2019. And according to our ordinance, uh, the in if an insurance settlement exceeds 75% uh, of the value of the insurance uh, policy, then the city receives a check from the insurance company for 15% of the value. The intent of that is uh, that the city can ensure that the house or structure is uh, taken care of, either uh, repaired or demolished, as the case may be. Uh, in this particular case, the uh, the house has since sold, and the current owner is Baker Homes, and they have taken out a building permit and have been aggressively pursuing the project. 
And as a consequence, uh, we do recommend that the city commission consider an extension of the of time to for them to be complete with their project. And at such time as their uh, interior work uh, is complete, then we can return the funds to them. Or we'll return the funds actually. Okay. Uh, any comments or questions uh, from the commissioners? And uh, <coughs> about her, it looks like they're doing a lot of work on it. I think I think we ought to go ahead and extend and let them finish it up. I know Baker Homes will do a good job on it. Any other comments and questions before I go to the two members of the public who are going to comment? Um, I. So there's two members of the uh, two citizens who wish to comment. So uh, please go ahead. I'm not sure who needs to go first, but uh, please give us uh, your feedback, please. I just keep Baker. Um, so I'm the owner of Baker Homes. Um, purchased property. I am in the middle of getting it uh, gutted out, gutting is done. Already started rebuilding everything inside. I got everything studded up. All the fire damage is taken care of. Um, just waiting on my subs to get furnace, plumbing, electrical going back in. So um, it's more or less their timeline. Um, with the way everything is going with this virus, it's very tough to get people scheduled right now. So sure. any kind of extension would be more okay. than appreciated. Thank you, Mr. Baker. Anything else? Uh, no, no, that okay. should do it. Is, and thank you very much. There's another citizen. Uh, would, would the other citizen please give us his or her public comment? Is there another citizen out there? If, if you are, you may be on mute. You may want to, uh, no? It might be Mike. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, it makes sense that Mr. Baker would be would have been one. So we'll, uh, since nobody has come up and make, made another comment, uh, could be Mr. Hooper, but um, I think that that's good. Any other comments or questions from the commissioners or Mr. Kramer? If not, yes, uh, I have a question. Okay, Commissioner Batter, go ahead. Okay, where it says. Okay, the property is given a blank day extension for repair or removal. Does that mean removal of the home or removal from the list? That would be the way it's written that you would be giving them an extension to repair the, uh, the property. And if it wasn't repaired, then it could possibly be removed or demolished. Okay, 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 got it. I thought saw that removal. I didn't know if that meant removal from the list. But anyway, I'd be fine with the extension or removal from the list. From the list. And we're going to talk about the, the language there and yeah. once so, we consider the resolution, right? Yeah, the, the language would, would stay the way it is. To get it removed from the list, it would come back to the commission to, to be removed. So um, the way the resolution is written, in the event that a property owner did not um, repair the property or bring it up to standard, then it could be, mm -hmm. we could remove the property, um, demolish the property. So... Um, Okay. Just the, because Thank it says removed, it be, yeah, taking it from the list has to come back for a separate op, um, option Action. from the from the commission after the extension. Sure. So. Okay. Does that answer your so, question, Commissioner Bowder? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Any other comments or questions? If not, uh, I will entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Well, I've got a question, Dan. So this means it's still on the list. It's not taken off the list, then. So there's no, this isn't, this is different than the, uh, this is Paul Kramer, the city manager. This is different than like a demolition list. This is the standard fire uh, demo uh, open comment. So it's, you're given a 90 day extension just to continue to complete the work. But there's on this, it's, it's different. This is not the, the demolition list. So there'd just be a 90 day extension. Then we'd bring back to consider the proceeds of the insurance. Okay, got it. So my question is, I guess, so if I'm not 100% complete by the 90 days, does that mean you're going to demo it? I mean, no. I can't control the schedule no. with 
the no, contractors. No, Keith, not at all. And that would not be our intention. Again, Paul Kramer, the city manager, that would just be our review date to continue to see that work is progressing. If you're not able to complete it in 90 days, the commission will hear it again, and you'd be able at that time to say, hey, here's what I've done in the last 90 days, and, and here's the plan to complete. So absolutely not in 90 days. The commission would hear it again if there if we still hadn't got to the point where we'd release the dollars, but it certainly would not be the intent to then tear it down. Right. Okay, because I'm already into this pretty deep yeah. already. Right. So, uh, yeah, I just you're, don't want to don't want to lose my investment. You're you're fine, and we understand the circumstances of COVID nineteen and its impact on our society overall, and particularly the work that. Um, that we're talking about here with this particular issue. So good question, Mr. Baker, but uh, we're, uh, we're going to take an action tonight and uh, it's just to give you that additional 90 days. And if things, you know, are such with your subcontractors and stuff and you have to come back, um, that's what you're going to do. And, and we'll be here to, to hear that. And so that's where we stand. Um, okay. Thank you. So I'm going to entertain a motion to uh, close the public hearing. So moved, Commissioner Bowder. There a second? Commissioner Wilson. Okay. Commissioner Wilson, will you second it, please? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. Second it. All right. Wilson. There's a motion and a second to close the public hearing. We are going to begin voting with Commissioner Wilson. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Leonhard. Aye. Commissioner Bowder. Aye. And as the mayor, I vote aye. The ayes have it. The motion, uh, the motion carries four to zero. So we've closed the public hearing. The next um, action is to consider resolution B twenty two forty eight. And I would just, Mr. Um, mayor, I, if I could, I would that, just. We approve resolution B 2248, giving the owner 90 days okay. to complete the repair or another day decided by the commission. Okay. Is there a second? Commissioner Leonhard, I second. Okay. Commissioner Leonhard, I second. All right, there's a, Roger. There's a motion and a second uh, to approve resolution B 2248. We are going to begin voting with Commissioner Leonhard. Aye. Aye. Oh, Commissioner Leonhard, aye. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Commissioner Bowder? Aye. And I, as the mayor, vote aye. The uh, motion carries uh, with a vote of four to zero. So we've approved resolution number B2248. Would you like me, uh, Ms. Williamson, to, to read the, the resolution? No, no, okay. No, that's not right. Okay. Good to go. I'm um, going to go back to our outline for the meeting. And thank you. Then under general items, the next is acceptance of dedicated land for public use, Crown Estates, the fourth plat. So um, do we want... Staff to comment on this? Yeah, Mr. Mayor and Commission, our uh, Director of Planning and Community Development, Julie Hurley, will handle this item. Okay. Ms. Hurley? Great, thank you. Okay. Um, yep, here I am. Okay. Okay, this is Julie Hurley, um, uh, Planning and Community Development Director. This is, uh, as you said, the final plat for Crown Estates' fourth plat. Um, this is a request for approval of a two lot plat for a 2.12 acre site. It's at the south end of the existing 17th Street Terrace in Crown Estates. Uh, basically what they're doing is just dividing that piece of land into two separate lots with the intention to build um, two separate single family homes. We did ask the applicant to go ahead and dedicate right of way for a potential extension of 17th Street Terrace. Uh, it's not intended to actually construct the street at this time. They're just dedicating that right of way so that in the future, if the lots to the south of this particular site um, were to develop, they would not be cut off from access. So. Um, the, the right of way is being dedicated. The street will not be built at this time unless uh, someone comes in to construct something on the uh, property to the south. So if you have any questions, I can answer those for you now. Any, 
Any questions from commissioners for Ms. Hurley? Pretty straightforward, and um, we had brought, we were made aware of this previously, I think, weren't we? In a previous meeting? I thought we were, but maybe, maybe not. But um, I don't have any questions or comments. If my fellow commissioners do not, I will entertain a motion. Commissioner Leon Hurley, I move to approve the dedication of land for public purposes as part of the final plat. There was a second. Commissioner Wilson, I second it. Okay, there's a motion and a second uh, for this particular agenda item. We are going to begin voting with <clears throat> Commissioner Wilson. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Leanhard. Aye. Commissioner Bowder. Aye. And I, as the mayor, I vote aye. The ayes have it. The motion carries four to zero. So we've approved the motion to accept the dedication of land for public purposes as part of the final plat, correct? That's correct. Okay, good to you, good going. Uh, next, mayor's appointments. I will move to reappoint to the Board of Zoning Appeals, Mr. Ron Bates Jr. to a term ending May 1st, 2023, and also to appoint to the Library Board, Ms. Carol Perry, to a term ending April 30th, 2023. Do I have a second? Commissioner Leonhard, I second. Okay. There's a motion and a second for the two, for the reappointment and the appointment, those, those two actions. We will begin voting with Commissioner Leonhard. Aye. Commissioner Wilson. Uh, Commissioner Bowder. Aye. And uh, as the mayor, I vote aye. The ayes have it. Uh, the vote is four to zero. So we've, we've approved the, the reappointment of Mr. Ron Bates and the appointment to the library board of Ms. Carol Perry. Thank you. Next is Thornton Street Project Update. Mr. Mayor and Commission, in just a moment, I'll turn this over to our Public Works Director, Mike McDonald. Um, I just wanted to bring this item to the Commission and to the public tonight. We're getting close to kind of a, a benchmark change in uh, Thornton Street from the east side of the project to the west side. Um, work has been going uh, very well on this project. Um, on the east half, there's still work to be done. Um, but as we transition now into uh, the western half of the project from 10th Avenue, to the intersection at Maple. I thought it was a good time to update everybody, remind everybody of the timeline. We've been working on this project since uh, late last fall, and so um, our, our citizens may not be uh, aware of or remember what the timeline is for this project. So I'm gonna turn this over to Mike McDonald, our Public Works Director, and have him go through uh, the project. Mike. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, uh, Taylor has some uh, slides that we had Put together briefly just to see where we are where we've been uh he's, he's free to flip through them as as we like because they're not in the order for my presentation sure. uh kissick uh, kissick was awarded this project in uh july of 2019 at a 4.9 million dollar cost uh, this is uh, to my recollection uh, the largest city finance construction project uh, since I've been here uh, most of the other large ones we had some sort of a cost share uh, with uh, with a grant or someone else uh, they began work uh, and basically have worked uh, all through the year and are continuing to work uh, even the last couple of weeks where the weather is a little wet uh, we initially, we uh, worked on constructing the drive through on Fifth Avenue to Maple, and that was that was open in December of 2019. And they've been working on the intersection at Second Avenue, uh, uh, the crossing at Second Avenue since then, and it is almost ready to be open. Uh, they have uh, put the picture here. You can see they've got the curbs. They're working on the sidewalk. Uh, we expect that the pavement will be complete, uh, except for the last, I believe, two inches uh, here the, this week. Additionally, uh, they've notified us that they intend to uh, 
potentially be done with this portion of the project and be moving their operation to uh, west of Maple Avenue. And therefore, Second Avenue will be open for through traffic in addition to uh, Fifth, Ave Fifth Avenue uh, to Maple. Uh, there'll be a traffic signal that'll still be uh, being constructed down at the Second Avenue intersection. And uh, they're going to start work at the creek crossing by the service center. Uh, we're not entirely sure uh, how we're going to change uh, patterns for certainly city operations or the public to access our, uh, our services there. Uh, but there will be uh, postings of that as we, as we go along. The uh, uh, project uh, could go fairly quickly at this point and expect to be done in uh, uh, basically September, October. Uh, we're excited to uh, see them be able to keep working with such the nice, nice weather that we have. Uh, we continually ask them if they have any concerns over the, the plans or the specifications or uh, the neighbors uh, have concerns and that we've had no issues raised by the contractor or the community over the progress of this project. Mr. McDonald, this uh, is uh, Mayor Griswold. Um, yes, sir. When did we, when did, when did the project actually start was it was it a year ago or a little less than a year ago uh, they started december uh, the 10th of 2019 excuse me they, they began october the 14th of 2019 and opened the intersection uh, where they were initially working uh, fifth avenue to maple in december of 2019 right. so they, That's they started working in october yeah yeah, I think I think the progress has been phenomenal, and uh, I, re I really think it's been a, a good plan, but a uh, good plan well executed. The whole, the three phases um, working very very well, and um, I think making uh, great pro progress. And I don't know if we're ahead of what the time you know the timeline that was initially envisioned, but um, and the and the slides we just saw you know show the. Uh, Show the sophistication and and the uh, of the work that's being done. So I'm very very happy uh, as one commissioner, and so I'll see if other commissioners have uh, any comments or any feedback for Mr. McDonald and Mr. Kramer. No, Commissioner Leonardo. Yeah, if it's looking great, making really good progress. Okay. Um. As far as the quality assurance, quality control, Mr. McDonald, be, uh, is it kind of a shared responsibility between you and your your team and and Definis? That's that's correct. The uh, Finis has uh, been out there on a regular basis and has worked closely with uh, our team to ensure that we get the right compaction, uh, that the right materials are used where they're supposed to be. We've been very happy with that. Any other comments or this, cause this is not, we're not vote, this is just for our information. Any comments or other questions from commissioners? If not, Mr. McDonald, yeah, just uh, kudos to you and your team. And of course the contractor and Finnis and just keep up the good work. Cause uh, it looks very, very good. And uh, thank you. We'll go to the next agenda item. If there's nothing else on this one. <clears throat> Next one is the resolution of B2249 authorizing the sale of 2020 uh, A bonds and A2020 temporary notes. So Mr. Kramer, is you gonna take that initially? Yes, I'll start. Thank you, Thank Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor and Commission, uh, I'm gonna have our city clerk talk about um, the issuance of the debt for Second and Chestnut on Independence Court and paving uh, the paving uh, project, and then I'll uh, have our finance director just give you a little bit of information about the refunding uh, part of this resolution um, and why we elected to to pursue a, a refunding at this time. So I'll turn it over first to our city clerk, Carla Williamson. Mayor and commissioners, um, thank you. This evening, this is the resolution authorizing um, the the sale of the bonds and the temporary notes, and also um, publishing the date of the sale that that will happen as well. 
Um, so there will be two separate things. We're going to be um, issuing general obligation refunding and improvement bonds, Series 2020A. Um, the total amount for those, $8,130,000. That's outlined in Section 7 of the resolution. But just to condense that a little bit, um, it includes four different um, things, as Mr. Kramer said. The second and Chestnut Stormwater Project, it's an mm -hmm. amount of... $2,030,000, and then the Independence Court Stormwater Project, $465,000, and then the paving 2019 temporary node. So that's the paving um, project that was done in 2019, and now we're doing the permanent financing of that now that we have the final numbers on it, mm -hmm. and that's in the amount of $1,415,000. Mm -hmm. And then the refunding, uh, which, as Mr. Kramer said, uh, uh, our finance director will talk a little bit more about that. That's four million two hundred and twenty thousand. So that uh, gives us that eight million dollar total. Right. And then the second one is our temporary notes A twenty twenty, and those are going to be sold in the approximate amount of one point four million. And those are to temporarily finance um, the pavement management project for this year. Um, and then those will be bonded next year once we the project is done and we have the um, the um, actual amount of it. The bond and temp note sale itself will be Tuesday, June 9th at 10 o'clock. Um, the results of those will come to the City Commission for final approval. So you'll see this one more time, well, two more times, but you'll see a, um, a first consideration ordinance at the next regular meeting, and then um, that will come back for uh, final approval on the 9th after the sale. Okay. If you have any other questions, I'll answer them. Otherwise, we'll let the finance director... Yes, no, uh, the, any questions or comments for Ms. Williamson? If not, we'll go to... Yeah, Ruby, are you on the line? Yes, I'm here. Okay, our finance director, uh, Ruby Moline, will talk about the refunding briefly. Ruby? So the one point, uh, the $4.2 million of the refunding bonds uh, is not new debt. These are bonds that we currently have outstanding they have become eligible for uh, redemption. And with the current interest rates uh, being lower than they were when we initially issued the bonds, uh, we would uh, recognize the savings if we did a refinancing of these bonds. And so that's what we're doing. Uh, ordinarily, I don't consider bond refunding unless there will be uh, more than 1% reduction of interest rates because uh, you'll have debt issuance costs that uh, usually come to about that amount anyway. So with the current bond market, um, we consider the savings um, to be worth uh, doing a refinancing. Uh, the interest rates, of course, will fluctuate between the time we did the original estimates and the time we uh, do the refinancing. But our, uh, as a conservative uh, estimate, we think that we will uh, save approximately a 3% interest rate which equates to about $167,000 of interest uh, uh, payments on those uh, bonds. So uh, with that, I'll entertain any questions that, that you may have. Any questions or comments from uh, my fellow commissioners to Ms. Uh, Maline? Maline, <laughs> our Maline. finance director, or Ms. Williamson at this point? This year about or you know, it looks like a good thing to do um, with you know with with the interest rates being lower and you know we appreciate you staying on top of that thank you so much yes you're so, welcome yeah any other comments or questions on this particular agenda item if not I will um, entertain a motion Commissioner Wilson here I move to adopt resolution B-2249, authorizing and providing for the public sale of general obligations, refunding and improvement bonds, series 2020-A, and temporary note series 2020-A, and setting forth the details of the sale. Is there a second? Mr. second. Okay, there's a motion to second to adopt resolution B-2249. We are going to begin voting with Commissioner Wilson. Aye. Commissioner Leonhard. Aye. Commissioner Bowder. 
Aye. And as the mayor, I vote aye. Uh, the ayes have it. Vote is four to zero. Uh, so we the motion carries. So we've adopted resolution B twenty two forty nine. Thank you. Next agenda item is consider bids for trash bags. Mr. Mayor and Commission, I will uh, turn this over to Mike McDonald, our Public Works Director, to talk about um, what we did and why we do it. And then if you have questions about why four of the bids did not qualify, um, Ruby, uh, Malene will also be able to handle those as uh, finance uh, handled the bid process on this. So, Mike, why don't you start? Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, this is our annual uh, bid for trash bags that are distributed to the residents of the community. Uh, we do uh, use essentially the same specification of uh, for the bags that we've been using for years and years, and uh, people find them to be good bags, and we've had a lot of interest in when they're going to be delivered, which I believe will be uh, toward the end of this month over two weekends. Uh, but these are for the bags that will be ordered that will replace uh, the ones we're going to deliver at the end of the month. Uh, we work with the finance office of uh, specifications and vendors and such, and they were uh, was advertised uh, ultimately with uh, with five bidders uh, that submitted samples. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, several of the bidders had uh, had problems with the paperwork in the bid. And yet the uh, and then the one other bidder that uh, successfully uh, submitted paperwork, their bids did not pass the thickness uh, test. We also used uh, an independent outside firm uh, to perform the quality control tests on the bags. Uh, these were uh, also coordinated uh, between public works and finance office uh, to ensure it was uh, that the uh, people did not know whose bags were being tested and that sort of thing. Uh, ultimately, uh, Jack Forrest provided uh, trash bags for the city uh, on and off for many, many years. And we do recommend that uh, the award be, uh, or the trash bag bid be awarded to Jack Core in the amount of $115,000. And uh, we will uh, save them for the next bag delivery. Okay. Any comments or questions for Mr. McDonald? I, and I think the point he made is that these, um, these trash bags will be the replacement for the bags that are distributed beginning later this month? Right, if, okay. May 30th. Okay. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Um, I don't have any questions or comments. Uh, if my fellow commissioners do not, I'll entertain a motion. Commissioner Leon Hard, I move to approve the qualified bid for JADCOR Incorporated for 23,000 rolls of bags at a total cost of 115,000. There a second? Commissioner Wilson, I second it. Okay, there's a motion and a second for this particular agenda item. We will begin voting with Commissioner Leon Hard. Aye. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Commissioner Bowder? Aye. And as the mayor, I vote aye. The ayes have it. Uh, vote is four to zero. Motion carries. So we've approved the qualified bid by Jade Core Incorporated for 23,000 rolls of bags at a total cost of 115,000. Thank you. Next is first consider consideration ordinance amending chapter 44, one way and no parking 21st street Choctaw to Shawnee. Mr. Mayor and Commission, our uh, police chief, Pat Kitchens, will handle this item. Okay. Hello, Chief. Mr. Mayor and Commission, this is Chief Kitchens from the Police Department. Uh, the Police Department is before the governing body this evening asking for you to make changes to the uh, parking and traffic flow sections uh, of our Municipal Code of Ordinances, uh, specifically Section 4429, One Way Streets and section 4487, no parking anytime. The City of Leavenworth Parks and Recreation Department is currently expanding the baseball field location at 21st and Choctaw Street to include batting cages on the northwest corner. Director Steve Grant uh, submitted a request to the City of Leavenworth Traffic Safety Committee 
to change the traffic flow and parking at that location to accommodate that uh, project once it's up and running. The specific request was to make traffic flow one way traveling north on 21st Street from Choctaw to Shawnee Street. Additionally, to restrict parking on the west side of 20 Street, 21st Street between Choctaw and Shawnee uh, any time. These matters were reviewed by the uh, Traffic Safety Committee at the April 2020 meeting and unanimously approved. Uh, in, in advance of our meeting this evening, the Public Works Department sent postcards with the attachments that you see to the area residents announcing the potential changes and advertising that the matter would be discussed at the City Commission on May the 12th. Um, during the course uh, after those uh, postcards went out, uh, I received one call from Elaine Teachout. She lives at 700 South 21st Street. She's lived there since the early 90s. Ms. Teachout is an elderly person who's having some health issues. Um, even if we were to have the meeting in, in its routine fashion, she wouldn't be able to make it. She expressed her concern and opposition to it. Um, she was concerned that parking is always a little bit tricky in that area anyway, given that there's uh, activities with the parents. She's indicated she witnessed a few pushing and shoving matches over some parking spaces. Uh, and she's concerned that the change of traffic flow might make it more difficult to exit out onto 20th Street from Shawnee if we uh, push the traffic to that particular location. Um, I promised her that I would make those uh, presentations for her. I did encourage her to call all of the commissioners or submit her emails. Uh, she was reluctant to do that, but um, she uh, those were her comments. Um, I am informed that there was one email submitted to our city clerk, Carla Williamson, that had some comments relative to this. And so I would turn it over to her so that she could read that email for the record. Okay, thank you, uh, Chief. Ms. Williamson? Okay, this was received um, on Thursday, May 7th from Dewey and Donna Gillette, yes. 517 South 21st Street. It reads, um, there would be no problem with 21st Street from Choctaw to Shawnee being one way north except for one thing. Most likely, there will be a bad safety problem for all who need to travel on Choctaw from 20th to 21st Street. Especially in the evening, folks driving on Choctaw from 20th Street West to reach their homes on Choctaw or on 21st Street, and those driving on Choctaw West so they can drive north on 21st Street to the park facilities will find quite a bottleneck along the parking on the side, south side of Choctaw. Since the city knew the plans they were making for a uh, ball field and batting cages, it was amazing that the city would allow the non-conforming restaurant at 20th and Choctaw to expand its footprint. Adding more seating um, requires more parking spaces, but there seems to be no room for increased parking spaces. Therefore, ca cars will be parked on the south side of Choctaw just like happened when Mama Mia's expanded seating without adding more parking spaces. Only now there will be additional parking, uh, cars parking for the recreation area, which makes things even worse than before. Back when there were times when restaurant patrons and ball, games, uh, ball game parents parking on Choctaw blocked Choctaw drives, children would come out from between the cars um, and, uh, to get to the ball diamond. This shows why there are rules for non-conforming businesses to not expand their capacity, and when the rules are not followed and favors are extended, bad effects happen. It seems backwards um, to now receive notice from the city about considering the one-way 21st Street. Where was the notice about expanding a non-conforming business in a single-family neighborhood? Thank you for asking for comments. Sincerely, the Gillettes. Mr. Mayor, that concludes um, all of the comments that I believe that the staff would have received relative to this. Um, none of them, in my view, uh, change our staff's recommendation. And so um, I would still recommend that we uh, you place an ordinance on first consideration, mm -hmm. section 4429 one-way streets, add this language, number five, 21st Street from Choctaw to Shawnee Street, vehicular traffic shall proceed north. And then under section 4487, no parking anytime, add the language 21st Street, west side from Choctaw to Shawnee Street, 
and then obviously we'll uh, do our best to answer whatever questions that you might have regarding the issues. I have a question. This Commissioner Bowder, I I just um, I think it's a good idea to have it one way there. Um, all the the signs and in the in the little space there where you have parking for the batting cages. Wouldn't it be nice if we had that whole block set up, set up, up set so that there could be parking on that side? Right now, whenever there's, um, I live right down the street, and I, right right now when I see the signs up there that say no parking, there's always cars parking between the signs. Nobody pays any attention to that, and it's always in the grass, tearing up the grass, and and at least you know now they'll only be on one side instead of both maybe unless they decide to park on the other side anyway because they're not paying attention to the signs that's already there so i just am curious about that part i i, I like i like where you put the the rock down there by the batting cages because that gives the people a place to pull off but i know there's parking over by the eagles but the seating is on the side where the street is and so the people park there because they're close to the seating especially those who are handicapped so you know that might be a whole different issue but anyway that's just my comments because this this um this ordinance this first consideration of this particular ordinance um, is specifying that there would be no parking either side of the street from 21st Street from Choctaw to Shawnee, correct, Chief? Can you repeat that question? I was just I was just saying that part of this ordinance, the second part of it, is that there would be no parking allowed on 21st Street from Choctaw to Shawnee. On just the west side, you could park on the east side of okay. 21st Street. Okay. You could park on the baseball field side along the grass. And I think that maybe what Commissioner Bowder was relaying is that towards the, closer to the batting field cages up there, they put um, probably 25 or 30 feet of gravel for cars to park um, a little bit off of the roadway and, and onto, the, uh, onto the, the, the east side of the road there. Mm -hmm. But the signs are still up there saying no parking at all on the right side. So uh, on, on the north, on the east side. So those signs would still be there. No, People they'll come down. still would not be able to park on the grass, which there are anyway. Are Mr. Byron, I think. There? They yes, ma'am. I think the signs that are there on the east side of the road where it says no parking go from the corner and it's supposed to be in and around that area right there just by the by the baseball field that's yep. where the where it extends i know that people don't necessarily follow that all the time but i think that's the intent is just right there by the 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 maybe 300 feet i think is the right language from the corner 300 feet north does that make sense yeah, i know i know that's there but people still park in between all the time i mean whenever yes. they're practicing they're parked there so why have a sign up if nobody's going to pay attention to it and nobody's enforcing it is what i'm saying we could certainly take those down if you would like um i just think it looks if we're not enforcing it why do we even have them up there i mean i understand why i have them up there is to keep from tearing up the grass but if they're parking there anyway, not paying attention to the signs, then why even have the signs there if it's not going to be enforced? That's all I'm saying. Kamala, do you have anything? You live there too. Yeah, I, I, I do. Uh, Commissioner Leonhard, uh, yeah, I agree with Commissioner Bowder. And the thing is, yeah, if you keep the signs up, you need to enforce that. But then at the same time, if you're not going to allow people to park in that area, there's not going to be that much parking anyway on that uh, east side so it, if they're going to park there you i mean can't you just remove them and let them park along that whole strip on the east side we're doing it anyway you might as well uh, yeah. i am not opposed to that um that that would be fine if you if you uh, were making those instructions that would be fine i don't think that's an unreasonable position 
I want to do want to respond to the enforcement part. We have occasionally and rarely done some enforcement, but that has generally been complaint based. If someone had called and said it's really over the top, we've been out there and visited with people. I don't know that we probably issued a ticket, but we have done some enforcement with verbal warnings occasionally when it gets too bad. Okay. Com Commissioner Wilson, do you have anything, any comments or questions on this particular uh, commission action? Well, if we're moving the signs, is going to provide more parking space, then, you know, I, I support it. So I think that we could, uh, as we get to uh, second consideration, unless there's, uh, I think I heard at least three of you uh, suggest that, we could add that when we come to second consideration that we'll remove those three no parking signs on the east side that go from the corner uh, up the length of the baseball uh, diamond there. Okay. I, I would agree with that because if if they're because they're less, less likely to park on the grass if there's more space there if they were parking like they have been on both sides okay. then there's not even any room for a car to go down between them so if if at least they're it, i think they would be more likely to park on the street part rather than out in the grass if there's nobody parked on the other side that's my thing so okay. uh, that's all i have to say okay i, I think that, thank you for go, go ahead chief <laughs> Mr. Bowder, let me interject one quick thing. Um, the state statute and the ordinance prohibit you from parking within 25 feet of the corner anyway, either way or whether there's a sign there or not. So we may okay. take a look at that, but past that, we'll, we'll, um, we'll make that parking for everybody. I think it would make a lot of people happier that are there at the park, so I'm yes, for that. Okay. Um, so we are um, need to have a consensus uh, to place this ordinance on first consideration uh, that makes the following changes. 21st Street from Choctaw to Shawnee Street, vehicular traffic shall proceed north one way. And then uh, the parking, uh, add 21st Street west side uh, from Choctaw to Shawnee Street, there would be no parking on the west side. Is that correct, Chief? Yes, sir. And then and then you, you said coming back on the second um, consideration, you'll address the, the signs that we just talked about on the east side, correct? Okay. Yes, sir. All right, so unless there's anything else, do we have a consensus? Uh, and I'll begin with Commissioner uh, Wilson, to, pr to proceed with yes. this ordinance, put it under first consideration. Yes, Commissioner Wilson, yes. Okay. Commissioner Leonhard? Yes. Commissioner Bowder? Yes. And yes, I, I agree. Um, I'm of, yes, we need to put this on first consideration, so we're unanimous as far as that. And uh, we'll look forward to the second consideration and a roll call coming up in the near future on this particular agenda item. Thank you. Good discussion. Um, I think we're going to go to the consent agenda. So that would be Commissioner Leonhard. Oh, she's muted. Hey, Commissioner Leonhard, you're, you're, mu you're muted. You need to unmute, please. Yeah. OK. Thank you. It's OK. Commissioner, Commissioner Leon Hard, um, I move to approve claims for April 25th, 2020 through May 8th, 2020 in the amount of $1,197,290.54. Um, net amount for payroll number 10, effective May 8th, 2020 in the amount of $316,499.87. No police and fire pension. Is there a second? Commissioner Wilson, I second it. There's a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. We will begin voting with Commissioner Wilson. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Leonhard. Aye. Commissioner Bowder. 
Aye. And I as the mayor vote aye. Uh, the ayes have it. The vote is four to zero. So we've approved the consent agenda for this evening's meeting. Um, so that completes the uh, formal agenda. I'm going to ask Mr. Kramer, our city manager, if, he's, if he has any comments. Uh, Mr. Mayor and Commission, just a couple of quick notes to share. Last week we uh, made a few more small openings for the city. Uh, we had uh, the campground open on a limited basis for those who had uh, campers that had their own self-contained plumbing. We did have uh, three uh, camp campers down at the campground this past weekend, which uh, was a good start, I think. Uh, we've had some good comments about the dog park, um, and that's being utilized. That was open in the middle of last week. Um, brush and uh, recycling continue on the same limited basis this week, and our plan next week, uh, starting would, would be Monday, uh, Monday, a week from yesterday, would be to go back to our normal hours. So we're happy that um, the citizens have bared with us, happy with uh, how staff has handled this, and so hopefully we can get back to regular hours um, uh, quickly. The rest of uh, the city opening city facilities, uh, a lot of that will be tied to what the governor decides to do with the Ad Astra plan to reopen the state. We'll continue to watch how those progress through the phases um, and continue to watch those. Uh, anybody who's watching or listening, feel free to continue to send your questions to the city um, and anybody, and we can get you an answer based on uh, what we plan on opening or when we plan on doing it or what our thought process is. So I just wanted to add that, that uh, I think our reopening is uh, going well, slowly, uh, safely, and securely. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Kramer. So we're going to go around the horn with commissioners, and we will begin with Commissioner Wilson. Yes, uh, last Thursday I was blessed with the opportunity to participate in the Fort Leavenworth National Day of Prayer virtual gathering. Uh, it was an honor being able to give words of encouragement during these trying times. And I want to also take this time to encourage us as a community to not get distracted by the politics, the racism, and the things that are causing division throughout our nation. But let us focus on becoming united as a nation. Let us continue to work together, serve together, and pray for one another. Because in order for us to get through this pandemic, it's going to take each one of us doing our part. We are the first city of Kansas. Let us lead the way and show the entire world that we are a community that is unified. God bless. Thank you, Commissioner Wilson. Commissioner Leonhard? Uh, no, I have no comments at this time. Okay. Mayor Pro Tem Bowder? Yes, I just wanted to talk a little bit about, um, I know, uh, Mayor you're going to talk about this tomorrow at, at your um, right. town hall, but uh, Kansas City, Kansas Community College, the Pioneer Center has several programs, and I know the unemployment rate is really high right now. There may be people who are looking to change careers or looking for jobs, and um, there are several programs here that are from one semester to one up to one year um, to complete a program. And, uh, the ones that I that she has has given me the newest ones are the, the most uh, the ones that they're at the Pioneer Center are the certified nursing assistant CNA certified medication aid um, CMA uh, construction culinary arts tech uh, electrical technology and heating ventilation and cooling HVAC so these are uh, these are all good programs they're uh, right here in Leavenworth, and um, they're they're inexpensive. There are oftentimes scholarships available. So um, please contact the community college. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Bowder, and I will talk about that um, tomorrow during the Facebook Live town hall. And the only thing I would add is that for some people who you know are no longer working right now because of the economic consequences of the what's happened as far as the COVID-19 health crisis. This is a good time to think about maybe taking advantage of these great programs that are available through the Pioneer Center of the Kansas City, Kansas Community College. So I will uh, definitely uh, include that and we'll talk about that tomorrow during my Facebook Live Town Hall. Um, I'm going to just, uh, what, one of the most important, if not the most important, uh, responsibility of citizens within our nation, within our state, within our uh, county, within our city in 2020, is to complete the census, which happens in our nation every 10 years. So I thought I'd take 
two, uh, two minutes or so just to give a little bit of statistics in terms of where we are right now uh, with, res with respect to the response rate and then give out a little information for people who may not have completed their census form yet. So the current self-response rates as of uh, yesterday, May 11, 2020, at a national level, 58.7% of the citizens within the United States have turned in their census forms, have completed their census, 58.7%. Kansas is a little higher than that, 63.2%. Uh, Leavenworth County is even higher than the state, 66.8% which makes it in the, within the top 10 in the state for counties, and that's very, very good. And then the city of Leavenworth is almost 60%, is at 59.8%. Um, so making progress, but there's still a ways to go, and we just want to get the word out to all our citizens to complete this civic duty in the, in the very near future, as soon as you possibly can, uh, the better. Um, in March, notices went out to Leavenworth residents asking them to complete the census online. Uh, and we want to encourage everyone to respond to the census by using the census ID they would have received in that notice. Our local field office says all notices were sent out in the city of Leavenworth. So to all the citizens within the city of Leavenworth, those notices were sent out in March. Uh, if anyone has lost that number, you can respond online or phone without an ID. There are three ways to respond, online, by phone, or by mail. And online, you would visit uh, 2020census.gov. The phone is 844-330-2020. And mail, you can return the form you received to the United States Census Bureau National Processing Center, and it's at 100 Logistics Avenue, Jeffersonville, Indiana, uh, 47414. But, um, I mean, if you have access to the internet, you have a computer, it is really easy to do online. Uh, it doesn't take long at all. Um, the deadline for responding to the U.S. Census has been extended to October 31st, 2020. Additionally, the U.S. Census is looking to hire and, and, and uh, restart its field operations. And you can check out uh, www.2020census.gov slash jobs to apply or check the status of your job application if you have applied, if you applied before the pandemic. And just very uh, briefly why this is important. An undercount of the U.S. Census affects how Leavenworth receives funding for low-income housing, low-income housing vouchers, money for road construction, new health care facilities, school buildings, supplemental nutrition assistance, otherwise known as SNAP, Medicaid, community development block grant programs, and more. Census officials estimate an undercount could cost Leavenworth approximately $54,000 in program funding for its citizen over a 10-year period. So, it is very, very important. It's probably our most, in addition to voting in a, in a presidential year, our most important responsibility as citizens of our city, county, state, and, and uh, nation. So I took a little time to do that. I'll repeat it again tomorrow during the Facebook Live Town Hall. If, there are nothing, if there's nothing else for, uh, from the fellow commissioners, I'll, make, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved, Commissioner Bowder. Commissioner Wilson, second. Okay, there's a motion and a second to adjourn uh, this evening's commission meeting. We will begin voting with Commissioner Leonhard. Aye. Commissioner Wilson. Aye. Commissioner Bowder. Aye. And aye is the mayor vote aye. So we've, uh, the ayes have it, motion carries, so we have adjourned this evening's meeting. <laughs> Good evening.